One of my favorite scriptures from my favorite book says, the race isn't given to the swift nor the, swift, nor the battle to the strong, but he who endures to the end. Was being in a very masculine industry, the there was a lot of, you know, um, doubt and insecurities and confliction within me um, during that time. Keon Latoy Dooling, born May 8th, 1980. I'm excited to bring to you today's feature whose life story can be just as much an assistance as his basketball one. Every time I come across a story like his, it reminds me that I need to be clear the mission of stunted growth and what it is I'm trying to get across. I take pride in having covered all these stories over the years because although many may go through the same stunts, they're all different and can be uniquely fitting to your situation. Also, to reiterate that not because you are said to have had your growth stunted, you can turn things around and at least become exactly who you were meant to become. In this case, maybe Keon Dooling was meant to become a journeyman veteran leader that was used as a teacher in most cases and motivator that kept it professional and showed the younger guys how to move in this game. As far as life, he's had to endure the toughest of trials a child can, and that's being forced to participate in adult activities that can break you forever, or at the very least, change your outlook on life. Having to hold that as long as he did, we eventually got to see how bad it ate at him inside, literally. So much so that he was checked into a mental institution when it finally boiled over at 35 years old. I have so much respect and admiration for Keon as a man first for sharing his story. He was a local star in high school, only needed two years in college before he was ready for the pros where he was taken as a top 10 pick in the draft. For these reasons, I'll tell you why his basketball career could have went a little better and how you young hoopers can use his story to possibly avoid the same fate. He still had a nice long career and at the end of the day is a hero to many in life. Let's get into it. It's your boy JC Stunted Growth. Let's get it, man. Dooling was a 6'3 combo guard from Fort Lauderdale, Florida that was a local star eventually selected as a Hall of Famer in Broward County. He was a top 20 player in the nation that chose the University of Missouri as his college choice and it wouldn't take long for him to be seen for the gobs of potential he had that could have made him a great in his era if he could put a few things together. What's up guys? Become a patron now. There you can find exclusive workouts, move breakdowns, and tutorials to help your development in certain areas. Also receive consulting each week with me where I help break down your game and build you into the player you want to become. Patreon.com slash stunted growth for more. Link is in the description. Enjoy the video. Stunt number one, tween. As in, in between. As in, are you the point guard your measurements suggest, or are you stuck in between that and the shooting guard skills and mentality you've developed over the years? I'm pretty sure it's a question many have asked themselves if you had the chance to see a young Keon Dooling play. If only he could have made the answer a little more definitive, we may be having a different conversation today. At Mizzou, Keon excelled, taking the defense off the dribble with the ball in his hands as a freshman, but because of him playing off the ball, taking advantage of his size at the high school level, and used primarily as a scorer throughout his time at Cardinal Gibbons and Dillard High, dueling developed into a style he'd be stuck in and unable to adjust all the way into his NBA days. He continued to get away with this style as a sophomore for Missouri, leading his team to a second tournament berth after missing the tournament three straight years prior to him arriving on campus. He averaged 15 points and three assists, shooting 34% from three, but just 38% from the field that brought about questions of him sometimes over-exaggerating his scoring mentality and not focusing much on being more of a distributor and honing his point guard skills. 
but because of the potential he illustrated through his motor, athleticism, and intrigue, if he should switch to point guard, he was taken with the 10th overall pick in the 2000 NBA draft by the Orlando Magic and immediately traded to the LA Clippers. The team attempted to play dueling at point guard behind Jeff McGinnis's 35 minutes a game and mix him in at times at shooting guard aside fellow rookie Quentin Richardson. But now on the NBA level, he didn't have the size to defend off guards or the distribution skills for the point guard in the NBA coupled with a severe high ankle sprain that saw him only play 14 games his second year. He lost a step and didn't get that important development opportunity he sorely needed in his transition to the position he was physically built to play. But by this time, Dueling is also holding a very dark secret inside of things that happened to him beginning at just five years old involving a teenage boy in his neighborhood. A secret he wouldn't tell anyone, not even high school sweetheart and future wife until his mid-30s. Stunt number two, overall lack of development. The thing that makes or breaks a tweener is them not being elite at at least one of the positions. Teams will always make exceptions for talent, ask Allen Iverson. And although Keon was a solid scorer in college, his lack of development as a scorer as a pro, which includes his shooting 32% from three, 75% from the free throw line, and 39% from the field in his four years with the Clippers, amounting to a six points a game average, although his number one ability was to score. He didn't have elite scoring nature to warrant accepting him being a liability on defense in favor of points on the board. Another development lack was his distribution skills. He averaged two assists a game for the Clippers over four years, showing he wasn't developing in this area as well. In my opinion, I think it was because both he and the team somewhere got confused about his tweener skill set. So while they were trying to develop him as a point guard, he was losing time in his natural position. And as that battle went on, he wasn't producing good enough numbers to keep him around. With feelings being mutual, he left for a closer to home new start with the Miami Heat where he spent a season and the Orlando Magic where he spent the next three years. A very important time for dueling as it further showed he was never going to lean toward either position and be prolific at one spot or the other. After Orlando, where he averaged almost the same production as with the Clippers, he was now 27 years old and the potential team saw in him completely faded. He bounced around the league from New Jersey to Milwaukee, Boston, and finally Memphis. Had he somehow found a way to commit and develop one of the guard positions, he could have been a really interesting player that could explode at any moment. That didn't happen and he was placed in a role of motivating younger players and being a leader in the locker room, which because of his genuine character, he did at a pretty high level. Stunt number three, checked in. Not into a game, a mental institution. After the 2012 Eastern Conference Finals while with the Celtics, Dueling was attending an event hosted by teammate Avery Bradley, where he was a guest speaker. While using the restroom, a man came from behind and grabbed him inappropriately, causing Dueling to crash mentally. His exact words, his heart dropped. This traumatic event was the straw that broke the camel's back, so to speak, because once again, he had to question what energy he gave off that caused him to be approached by males in this manner. By all accounts, dueling became instantly different after the incident. He then had an abrupt meeting with team GM Danny Ainge and made his plans to retire known. His teammates noticed his different behavior by things he began to do that was totally out of his character and so did coach Doc Rivers. Things came to a head while he was playing outside his home with his kids and a neighbor called the police stating that the way Keon played with them seemed overly aggressive. 
with his kids running inside to get their mom, Dooling was in the streets in his shorts only, clearly confused with guns drawn on him and being ordered to the ground. He was taken immediately to a mental institution where he couldn't even remember his wife for a long time. When he finally began to get better, he confessed to her what had happened to him as a child and how that caused him to react in a mental breakdown when those feelings were rehashed. He then told Doc Rivers and informed his teammates the real reason he just couldn't continue any longer. He'd make a comeback with Memphis in 2012-13 that lasted seven games before officially retiring a second time. He became a spokesperson for anyone affected by situations like his and continue to share his story to anyone that'll listen in hopes of spreading awareness, letting kids know it's okay to talk and tell someone, and giving them a safe place to express their feelings should this happen. All in all, Keon Dooling still had a nice NBA career and basketball journey where he played 12 seasons in the NBA and made close to $30 million over that time. He was a valuable mentor for guys like Rajon Rondo and Avery Bradley and also earlier with a young D-Wade. He's loved by every teammate he's had over the years and I'm sure is a hero to a lot of young people and players possibly burying their own traumatic occurrences in their childhood. Salute to Keon Dooling, really enjoyed his game and respect him mostly for who he's become in life. Salute to him, much respect. It's your boy JC Stunted Growth and I'm out. Make sure you follow me on twitch.tv slash Gaming if you want extra free content like me breaking down the day's highlights, moves, drafts, and past players or games upon your request. Let's chat and talk live as it's easier to answer your questions than a place like Instagram where your messages tend to get lost. Follow me there. It's free and we can connect instantly. Join the Discord as well to chat in-game. I'll leave links to everything below.